continuation of my edible series. As you can see, I'm in a beautiful birch forest up here in the mountains. A cloudy day with a little bit of threat of storms in the air. We'll see if we get any. But today I'm going to talk about a plant, again, where the root has been used for a very long time. Sarsaparilla. This grows from southern Canada all the way down into the mountains of Georgia. I've even found sarsaparilla growing all the way out in um, eastern Kansas. So it, uh, it has a pretty vast territory. As you can see, let's move here. It comes up out of the ground. Of course it grows in primarily forested areas where the soil is moist and also fairly rich in nature. But if you can see here, it comes up out of the ground, out of this hard sheath. Okay, this is actually the beginning or the top of the root itself. See how it's kind of barky? Then it comes up and you have the, uh, the old uh, stalk sheath covers right here, kind of uh, purplish in color. Then the stalk grows up and you can see it's kind of a brownish red. Now this one here, uh, actually, all of them in this area right now are bent because just last week we had 27 inches of snow laying on top of these plants and so it uh, it kind of contorted and twisted a lot of them but normally these stalks are straight you follow the stem up and it comes to a branch of three now that the stem itself is slightly hairy not very much but it is slightly hairy some of them are more hairy than others now, as you come up here, on the top of each one, you've got these strongly veined leaves. And the leaves are very finely toothed, if you can see that on the top leaf there. Very fine teeth on them. All of them are very shiny in nature. They have that nice rooty color to them. This one here happens to have three. However, this one over here has five. I've seen as many as eight leaves growing off of one stem. Now it's the root of these plants that we're interested in. And most of you have probably heard of the uh, sarsaparilla or root beer before. Some of you, or probably a lot of you, have already had it. But how many of you have actually had the traditional kind? Nowadays your root beer Sarsaparilla and birch beer are all made synthetically. All kinds of nasty high fructose corn syrup and food coloring. But the natural way of doing it is to take this root. Now, I'm going to clear this dirt out of the way a little bit. Because these roots are quite long. These roots are actually so long that most of the time when you pick them, you never get the whole thing. Kind of like a dandelion root which ensures the survival of the species, of course. But these roots can grow, I've seen them as long as three feet in length. Okay, and you see it's got a brown covering on it. That is the, the part of the root that you're looking for, all right? Not the brown covering, because the brown covering is just more or less a stain or a thin paper that can easily be scratched off to a white root underneath. You take these roots and you can either dry them or use them fresh. You can bring your water to a boil. Now because this is a root, you do want to simmer it, unlike a leaf, where a leaf you don't ever want to simmer it because you'll deplete all the vitamins and nutrients. Okay. Because the root is tough and to extract the, uh, the flavors, the uh, volatile oils, um, uh, and all the nutrients, you have to simmer the uh, Simmer the, the hard, barky root in water. Now with sarsaparilla, along with many other roots, you can simmer it for about 20 to 30 minutes. All right? And then, if you want it much stronger, you can let it steep for up to an hour. 
<clears throat> has a, a wonderful um, kind of a, a tang, tangy earth um, flavor to it. It's delicious tea, absolutely wonderful. And to enhance the qualities of its flavor, you can add uh, wild honey or sap from the uh, birch tree or uh, the uh, sugar maple tree. Uh, that makes a, a absolutely delicious tea that's also extremely beneficial for the health. So sarsaparilla happens to be a very drying root. Um, so if you have a lot of interior dryness going on, you don't want to consume too much of the sarsaparilla tea. Um, however, if you have a, a lot of damp qualities within you, sarsaparilla tea is excellent to drink um, on a daily basis if you want. You can also mix the sarsaparilla tea with other barks, um, like the inner bark of birch or maple. Um, this gives it a completely different flavor because um, you're adding the, the natural sweetness of those trees into the more of a, an astringent, uh, tangy earth flavor of the sarsaparilla. Makes a, an absolutely wonderful tea in the woods or in your home because anywhere you live in the locations I described where you have some moist woodland probably find a species of sarsaparilla. Again, only harvest if you find a lot of the plants growing around. Sometimes you will find just one or two sarsaparilla plants. Don't harvest the roots. Okay? Uh, make sure that there's a good grouping of sarsaparilla, which is not normally hard to find. They're usually pretty prolific. So this is White Wolf up here at Ways of the Wild Institute, where the black flies are starting to uh, breed. If you wish to learn more about wild edibles or anything else, wilderness survival or wilderness living skills, along with the native medicine ways, check out my website, waysofthewildinstitute.com. Willamalison, be well and happy.